Hello and welcome. I'm Michael Marshall and I'll be your host for this discussion. It will focus on the role Korean Americans have played in the history of both the United States and Korea and the role they might continue to play today. This is an initiative called the Korean American Legacy Project. Over the past few years, Korea has featured heavily in the news because of North Korea's nuclear threat and the efforts to deal with it, uh, notably through the summit meetings between President Trump and Chairman Kim Jong-un. Unfortunately, uh, these have come to nothing. As a result, more and more people are looking for a different path to resolution through the ultimate reunification of the divided Korean people. In that effort, global public opinion will have a major role today. This is especially true for Koreans living in the diaspora, and in particular, those in the United States with its long history of engagement with Korea. We're fortunate to have with us today two gentlemen living on opposite sides of the United States who know a great deal about the Korean American community, uh, both in its past and today. Uh, professor Marn Cha, is from California. He's a professor emeritus at California State University, Fresno uh, in political science. He's also president of the Central California Korean Historical Society and author of a book called Koreans in Central California, 1903 to 1957, a study in settlement and transnational politics. Richard Lee lives in New York State and he's president and chairman of Action for Korea United USA, uh, which is the sponsor of the Korea Le American Legacy Project. He's also president of the Republican National Coalition for Asian Advancement and has served as human rights commissioner for Westchester County, New York. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Uh, professor Cha, let me begin with you. Uh, first, you, uh, founded the Central California Korean Historical Society and served as its president uh, with the purpose of maintaining the legacy of the Korean independence movement, which was active from 1903 until Korea's liberation and independence uh, from Japanese rule in 1945. Can you tell us a little bit about the importance of the Korean American legacy and contribution to the Korean independence movement? Uh, thank you for uh, invitation. Um, if I drag on, uh, give me a signal. You may uh, actually interrupt me. <laughs> uh, um, now, a little bit about background. Um, uh, organized Korean uh, immigration to the United States uh, started uh, in 1903 as uh, uh, sugar plantation industry uh, developed, they needed for labor. And uh, Sugar Plantations, Plantation Planters Association approached uh, then Korean Kingdom to some, some Korean laborers to Hawaii. So between 1903 and 1905, in mere two years, some 7,000 Koreans arrived in Hawaii to work on sugar plantation. And of those 7,000, uh, roughly 2,000 uh, transmigrated to California and West Coast. And um, they knew little English, no capital. And the type of work they could do was something only with their hands and the most readily available jobs were on farms. So of these 2000, roughly about uh, half of them settled in town called Dinuba and Ridley, which is exactly uh, at the middle between the San Francisco and Los Angeles. And Approaching 2003, that will be the centennial of Korean immigration to the United States, um, Korean government put aside a budget 
and wanted to uh, big celebrate centennial celebration and approached uh, me to look into a Korean settlement in Danuba and Ridley, which I did. And we have about 213 uh, graves of uh, early Korean immigrants uh, who were born uh, late in 19th centuries and then uh, passed away uh, mostly in uh, 1950s and, and mid 20th century. And so to undertake the uh, uncovering of, of historical artifacts and sites, we uh, organized uh, Central California Korean Historical Society and and I served as a founding president uh, uh, ever since, until a few years ago, I turned it over to uh, younger leadership. Now, the actual significance to Korean uh, independence movement, when they came to Hawaii in 1903, they came with Korean kingdom issued passport. And then merely six, six to seven years when it came to uh, 1910, Korea has been annexed by Japan into latter's territory. In other words, uh, Korea has become Japanese colony. With it, uh, technically they became subjects of uh, a Japanese uh, imperial state. And the passport they brought in became invalid. And so Japanese consulate and embassy asked the Koreans in the United States to bring in their old passport and then they trade in uh, for a new one, which was the Japanese passport. Now, anyone who did it uh, was considered a traitor. And among in the community, they, they, they literally they, they harassed him and then nobody dared to do that. They did it, if they did it, they did it behind the scene. Then what became is that they became stateless people, uh, had no one to uh, look after them. And um, uh, uh, so they passed them off as a Chinese because uh, to begin with the English was, uh, was, was, was not much of it. And then to explain somebody else that they lost their country was too shameful. So what they did was to work for uh, Korean independence uh, to take the country back from Japan. Now that became their passion. In fact, that became the 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 meaning of their life while working as a farm hand in 100 degrees San Joaquin Valley during the summer and one on 10 and 20 sometimes the temperature wise and earning 10 cents an hour at most of which they set aside 120s to support uh, uh, Korean independence movement. And the most prominent one who uh, uh, came around to these two towns to raise money was Sung Man Ri, who uh, eventually became the first founding president of the of Republic of Korea, uh, followed by Dosan uh, An Chang Ho, um, and then uh, uh, others like uh, Sir Jack Peel, based in, in Philadelphia and coming to back east. And, uh, and therefore, uh, their um, uh, uh, purpose of living in the United States was indeed to work for restoration of the uh, dignity, dignity and sovereignty of their homeland uh, with the thought that they will eventually uh, uh, return. Do I have a few, few more minutes to ask? <laughs> yes, if, if you'd like to add some more, uh, or we can go move on to talk about reunification today. Uh, okay. Um, and so when they, um, uh, uh, and mostly uh, from 1903 through uh, 20th century, they were not qualified by US law to uh, be naturalized or become citizen until 
1956. So they were lonely and discriminated against. And the current uh, uh, Black Lives Matter reminded me of the tough times that they had. And, but they had no complaints because they still were allowed to carry on independence campaign. And for example, someone reapproached the State Department quite often to recognize the, uh, uh, the, the Korea as a potentially independent state. And uh, he has done a lot of uh, uh, work uh, uh, following the, uh, uh, the Korean settlement, uh, which was not only in California, but also uh, uh, in Idaho and, and uh, a pocket of it, Chicago and New York and Texas and so on. And the reason you may sound, you may think that Iowa and, and, and and, and, and Texas, well, what they did, they followed the coal mine, gold mine, silver mine, uh, even Arizona. And, 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 and most uh, 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 risky work of uh, blowing up the mine and, and, and because that paid uh, uh, well. And so Suman Ri visiting every town uh, and raised the money and um, uh, and, and to them, that was important uh, uh, duty and, and responsibility for the, for the country. And, and now why I preserve this uh, is to tell the posterity uh, where they come from. Uh, they were born in the United States. Uh, they enjoy civil rights, voting rights, which their ancestors uh, didn't or couldn't. And, uh, but it was not simple. They, they um, uh, put out a lot of effort and, and, and hardship. And uh, Koreans at the same time though, uh, they uh, 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 helped uh, US troops in Second World War, buying war bonds and so on because uh, the prospects of independence was when US will win over Japan, which indeed turned out to be true. And so uh, they also sent second generation to uh, armed services to serve in the U.S. Army. And so uh, this, the, uh, uh, the, the, therefore the, the, the heritage that I want, we want to provide to them through historical society is really to maintain uh, their uh, heritage. Uh, heritage is a good way to maintain mental health, we find. Mm -hmm. It's not to really promote uh, all the style Korean nationalism of any kind, because it's good for children mm -hmm. to know where they come from, who they are, and so on. And so Absolutely. my approach is very practical one, yes. uh, to, to, to help them their sanity and then and, and, and at the same time, a uh, good sense of who they are. Yeah. So let's move on and talk about uh, Korea today. Um, in, in one basic respect, the aspirations of the original Korean independence movement remains unfulfilled because that, that aspiration was for a country that was uh, united, independent and free. Mm -hmm. um, it is not united, obviously. So do you believe that today Korean unification is a goal that we should be working for? And if so, what, what sort of principles and values uh, should guide the pursuit of a united Korea and the establishment of united Korea? Um, to Koreans, the concept of geopolitics is awful term, uh, awful in the sense that uh, their fate as a nation dependent depended upon what others do to them. That's what geopolitics meant to them. Because mm -hmm. the, it's, it's a function of somebody else's action made our destiny. And so here's a China, what shall we do to Korea? What Japan will do to Korea? And then Russia and so on. Now, principle wise, I would dare to say that we will make use of geopolitical condition and situation we are in 
positively and then proactively rather than uh, to react to uh, uh, big powers uh, action uh, to Korea. Uh, for the first time, Korea now has become an advanced country in all aspects. Uh, it is a tenth of 12th uh, largest trading nation in the world, depending upon which statistics do you look at it. And also their lifestyle infrastructure, if you go to Korea, South Korea, uh, it is in the rank of this advanced country. And with that confidence, they are ready, they should be ready to take on their own destiny in their own hands rather than depending upon somebody else. So self-determination and uh, autonomy that you, you ought to claim. And I think that's one important principle. And then persuading neighboring countries why it is good for them too, for Korea to be unified. Hmm. Now, why unification? One important is humanity. Uh, North Koreans, uh, by the way, in 1952, I visited North Korea to give a lecture and stay there a couple of weeks. Um, it's dated already, it's 1992, but even then, uh, starvation uh, uh, started to show up in countryside uh, for humanitarian reason. Uh, 20 some million population are literally in Gulag. It is most guarded police state you can imagine. It is a totalitarian state, not even authoritarian. It's a totalitarianism, complete control over the lives of the people, giving, a, giving them a chance to breathe and to see what, what the rest of the world is like and also feed them. And, and, and so that's, that's that the dire need for, for, for humanity is, is uh, 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 an important reason. I think we should uh, work for uh, liberation and unification. So, so, so thinking about that, uh, what in your view are the most important steps uh, that can be taken to help bring that unification nearer? And in particular, what's the best contribution that Korean Americans can make to that goal? Addressing that question, so many variables are in flux these days. Mm. I don't know which one to start out with. Uh, for example, North Korea is now in flux, in a very dangerous state. <laughs> Kim Jong-un uh, seem she, she seems to be okay, but he, he is not. I even some predict that he may not be uh, living anymore, or there may have been dramatic power shift and so on. But uh, more stable aspects uh, 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 of it. I think Korean Americans should persuade American government to lift some sanctions. Now, in lobbying and working for that, what I have in mind is uh, Jewish American model. For example, Jewish Americans population wise is so small, less than 1%, but they hold a tremendous power uh, in terms of organized action to protect their uh, motherland, Israel. And doing so, they work from inside, persuading the, the power holders in the United States, and they themselves become a power holders. And therefore, they try to find to to integrate Israeli interest with the U.S. interest. It's not so much rudely uh, persuading someone to to work for Korea or to help Korea, which which I think is 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 not is not really working. Maybe sentimental it might, but in organized fashion, in organized fashion, you 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 organize pack. And, and, and get yourselves to get elected to office and also know how to use lobby and, and organized action. And, and so first 
to be to a relaxation of sanction and also lifting travel ban to to North Korea, which is now in force, and also liberalize the the trafficking of academics, sports, and non-political affairs, and so, then gradually working up to political steps. Yeah. So let, let me ask you about the uh, lifting of sanctions, uh, because uh, critics of that policy would say that all it would serve to do is strengthen the position of an oppressive regime. Uh, how do you respond to those critics? Uh, Yes, sanctions are squeezing North Korea a great deal, and and they are cornered, uh, and perhaps expecting regime to fall down. But I don't think it will happen. They are uh, putting more pressure on their own folks to comply with uh, with uh, with a state uh, a state uh, mandate. Uh, so sanction is uh, double-edged to me, really. On one hand, is to put the pressure on North Korea, which is really hard. On the other hand, uh, we, the, the US complete denuclearization of North Korea is not going to serve our purpose. I think the John Bolton knew that and, and, and uh, uh, President Trump knew that somewhat, but he wanted to pull off something dramatic if he if he tries, uh, which is too much simple-minded to me. Because to be honest, our economy ever since the end of Second World War has been integrated into military buildup so much that it is now difficult to dislodge that we often call by military industrial complex, but that's too much to use one term. Uh, still it is there. After the end of Cold War, we thought that there would be some structural change in, in composition of military industrial complex. It didn't. In fact, it, 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 it has become more strengthened and, and, and now more solid than ever. And therefore, on one hand, we harp on nuclear threat of North Korea. Supposing from so far, for some reason, North Korea is completely denuclearized, then we may have find another North Korea to bolster the rationale for arms buildup, which is important to the final campaign financing and then particularly Republican Party. So it is interesting to note that we had a Geneva Agreement for 13 years, which is the Clinton administration started, we had the North Korea stalled. It put, put the hold on their nuclear development under Kim il -sung. When that period, that was during Democratic administration. And then as soon as uh, the uh, George the Bush came in, he started to, to, to stay away from it eventually for some fringy reason. We told uh, uh, North Koreans, gee, you are not complying with the term. And then we went back to old style because the Republican Party is much more tightly tied with the military spending, its result, its, its consequence of campaign finance, et cetera, more than the Democratic Party. So it, it is it is integrated to in domestic politics in the United States as well. And so, so it's, it, it's so, so let, let, let's address let's address uh, American policy to, 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 towards Korea. In, in an ideal world, I mean, if, if you could have the US government that that did what you would like to see done. What role would you do? You think America should play uh, in pursuit of the goal of Korea reunification? Uh, let me become an idealist in that regard. Well, that's that's uh, what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I I personally believe. By the by the way, I'll, I I I I like to advocate denuclearization, which US, England, and other superpowers all demonstrate. In other words, they themselves denuclearize first. Set an example. Hey, and so Obama, I think the President Obama wanted to start that other bit, chip into it. And, and then now the, the President Trump's case, forget it. It's an Iran nuclear deal. He, he ditched 
and then he, uh, uh, the, and and even these days he may uh, uh, rest, uh, restart uh, nuclear testing. Ideally, denuclearization on global scale, Pakistan and India, Israel, France, all give up nuclear, nuclear uh, uh, power, just completely, and turn that to peaceful means to electrification others. So do you have any suggestions for American policy specifically uh, towards Korea with, with, with a goal to bring unification closer? Uh, I mean, is it some form of denuclearization or are there other things? I hope they would have welfare of North Koreans in mind, uh, as well as the future peace of Asia. Uh, not to use Asia as a potential ground for uh, US-China confrontation, which is entirely possible. And last time when fire and furious, the reaction the President Trump had toward the North Korea, and you may remember Lindsey Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham said, well, if anything, lives lost, uh, there will be the, not us, but Asians and so on. In other words, the Asian lives have been cheap in history. Uh, this Second World War dramatically and, 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 and the Chinese revolution itself and so on. So uh, we ought to get the, the humanity in mind and, and then, uh, 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 restructure the course of U.S. foreign policy along the line of uh, uh, nonviolence, negotiation, reconciliation, and then uh, also accommodation of China. So Professor Cha, thank you very much. That's been extremely instructive. Um, I'd like now to turn to Richard Lee, who, as I mentioned before, is the uh, President and Chairman of Action for Korea United USA. Uh, by its name, Action for Korea United, uh, you know that it's uh, there to uh, pursue the goal of bringing Korean reunification closer. So uh, Richard, uh, welcome. Uh, I'd like to ask just a few questions about your organization and, and what it's doing. So who, who belongs to Action for Korea United USA? Yeah. Uh... Actual name is uh, Alliance for Korea United USA. I apologize. <laughs> okay. We call AKU USA, uh, short term. Uh, is a coalition of uh, Korean American organizations and individuals advancing the cause for the Korea unification. And uh, we have uh, partnerships with the Korean American associations including the Federation of Korean Associations USA and organizational leaders as individuals. So what are your goals? What, what are you trying to achieve through the Alliance? Yeah, our goal is AKU USA gets more and more Korean Americans to engage in ongoing efforts for a, toward the uh, unified Korea. And what we're trying to achieve is to build the consensus and momentum for a united Korea uh, and strengthen the long-standing partnership between the United States and the South Korea, as well as deepen the bonds of friendship connecting Korean and American people. So tell us a little bit about some of the projects and initiatives that you're currently pursuing. Uh, uh, by learning the spirit of Korean American history legacy uh, during the 1903 to 1945 for the uh, Korea independence movement, uh, we as a, a Korean American uh, fulfill the Korea reunification goal through forums educational programs and policy initiatives and community engagement projects to influence on American policymakers, think tankers, 
and American friends to support the Korea reunification. So how can people who want to support the work of the Alliance and its goals get involved with you? We have a website, uh, www.unitedkorea.us. Uh, people can uh, read our website. Uh, they can support and join uh, through our website. So, gentlemen, uh, Richard Lee, Professor Cha, Thank you so much for a most illuminating discussion. Uh, it, it, it's been fascinating to learn about the many Koreans in the United States who were and are both patriotic Americans uh, while also holding a deep concern in their hearts for the land of their ancestors. I'm sure Korean Americans with their friends and supporters will have as large a role to play in shaping Korea's future as they did in its past. So if you're watching and you want to help or just learn more, do check out the AKU USA website and thank you for watching.